Yeah, let's do side quest stuff for now. Maybe I could do the affinity scene first before side quest stuff. But yeah, we, uh... What is this place called again? Oh, look, Park. I guess it says it right there. It's been a little while since seeing it in a Xenoblade 1. But we're back at Outlook Park for the first time in however long it's been. This takes me back. Yeah, me too. I always liked coming here. Whenever I had to do some serious thinking. I can see this being a good place to focus. It's quiet. No people around. Well, in my case... I'd often get so deep in thought, I'd forget to eat all day long. That's unexpected. You seem very together, Sean. Ha. <laughs> if that is so, the credit goes to someone I've known all my life who'd bring me food here. She supported me through thick and thin. It's thanks to her I'm here today at all. That goes for you, too. What was that? Hey, Nicole. Once things have settled down, let's come here again and talk properly. We can have sandwiches together, ones with special herbs and spices, eh? Yes, sure. That sounds nice. Aw, just like Nicole's mother would have made. Though he's probably never experienced that. All right. Well, hi, friends. You're not ready? Ma'am, mine arteries throb with anticipation. Do Mac and I have arteries? Maybe they do in this room. I don't know. I'm good to go whenever. You know. Come on then. Give us your best shot. No need to hold back on our account. Those were to me my very words, young master. I intend to demonstrate to you without fail the flawless precision of aim that won me the top ranking in the city's marksmanship. Ah. Yeah, yeah, that's enough chatter now. Linka, can you be the ref? Step in when you feel everyone's had enough. On it. All right, watch him be insanely higher level than me or something. All units, two arms. All right. Oh, you're fighting two battles, start. All right, what level are you? Level 26, yeah, this is gonna be fine. Let's play as Matthew a little bit. It's been a while since we have. It's been a little smidge since it's happened. Yeah, I guess I can cancel arts into arts now. So I may as well. May as well do so. I thought I'd cancel there, but I guess not. I guess I can select focus attacks and stuff. I suppose I can do that. Yeah, this is just a little smidge of mayhem. Just a tad. I'm gonna take your stuff. Beat you up, take your lunch money, you know? Okay, and with the power charge? Bam, well... I think someone else did that massive chunk of damage rather than me, but, you know. But, you know. Alright, detonating hit takes a little while to charge up there. Okay, who's this that's almost down? There we go. I'm taking your lunch money. It's mine now. I'm going to use it to buy the most useless thing. Bam. Sure, let's do this. Oh, yeah, I need to... I knew I was forgetting to change something around in my menu earlier when it comes to my team. The, uh, those attacks, who's paired up with who and what kind of effects they have and stuff, man. Keep forgetting. All right, well, yoink. I think I just managed to yoink both the things. Well, screw you, I guess, Lottie. Didn't do too much damage. Not too, too much there. Well, paunch. All right, talent art time. Big paunch. All right, sweet. But yeah. Close combat is a new recruit. What? Hello? I don't understand. Big smackaroo. Bam. Cool. That's enough. Please put away your weapons. My word. Well done, young master. We have been well and truly bested. Shouch. You're not sure know what you're doing. Ow. The guys did a good job. You keep up with that training, and you'll come into your own soon enough. Words of praise from the young master's lips. Now I can die happy. That's it for today's training. Recruits, dismissed. Heartfelt thanks for your instruction. Good job, guys. Louis, you stay. <sighs> You're hurt, aren't you, Louis? And not from the mock battle, before that. 
can't hide it from me. Uh, yesterday's training, I'd wager. Why did you keep mum? Well. I don't want the others to think I'm holding them back. I understand the feeling of wanting to do everything you can, even at the cost of aggravating your injuries. That's why I didn't stop the fight, but this is the last time I'll overlook this kind of reckless look blah, 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 recklessness from you, clear? My apologies, ma'am. Just so we're crystal, it's got nothing to do with being a citizen or a liberator. If you're fighting with us, you're a friend. I hope you can remember that. I will. Oh, um, and thank you. It's not all every day someone calls me their friend. Glimmer, could I trouble you for some healing? Panacea's parents were caring to a fault and beloved by many. That's cool. So she, I always struggle with freaking Matthew tone. That's cool. So she gets up from emulating her old folks, eh? She could seem intimidating at first, but she's very empathetic to those around her. That, and she makes a terrific leader. She may one day lead the Liberators herself if the occasion calls for it. If that time comes, I hope you'll support her in my stead, Matthew. Uh, Shulk, you want to cut it out with the ominous remarks? Just know that I'll be counting on you. I won't be surprised if Shulk and Rex bit the dust by the end of this because they don't appear in, you know, Xenoblade 3 main game. Yeah, okay. Go on then. If that time comes. But yeah, I take it Sharla and Ryan are Panacea's parents. Instructor Panacea, through witnessing Panacea's training methods, Matthew saw a cider he hadn't seen before. Shulk, meanwhile, appeared to be absorbed in his memories. Bladestone? I have two of those. I don't know what I got those, but, uh... But it's something or other. Alright, time to, uh... Go see about some quests here. Also, I realize now that X is the normal menu, and, uh... Plus wouldn't have been. So earlier when I pressed plus and it was like, Oh, it's what I needed to do anyway. Um, it's just doing the same purpose faster when I needed to access the map. I guess it wouldn't have brought me to that one menu that could access the map. Anyway, <laughs> doesn't matter at all. Just a little remark that I made earlier that I'm now realizing wasn't quite completely right. Hi, some people were chatting about you earlier. Whoa, whoa. He, hi, he, I don't know. Honestly, where's that guy got to? Wander off on me, dang it. Oh, Rex. Just when the great Saomi happened upon the discovery of a lifetime. A big, huh? Uh, you know what? Never mind that. Just do me a favor and forget about him, okay? <laughs> well, I'm grabbing these. They're mine now. Thank you. Strong dandelion. They are now in my pocket. Hi. How's it going? Uh, is it true that Consul N turned up at the... Gosh, dang it. At first, I was like, that seems familiar. You know when. No, I don't need to talk to Perito. I need to talk to... Ew! <laughs> hmm, is that a problem? Maybe we ought to report this after all. We're still rookies. I don't know if it's a good idea to be running our mouths. What's all this about, then? Ah, Panacea. Alinka. Um, uh, hi. Busy day? You can stay at the supply office all you like. Still gonna have to use mouth words if you want to buy stuff. Oh, um, no, we're not here to buy anything. I was assigned to the commissary back when I was in Kevis and had to take care of all the logistics. Kind of the same deal here, too, except I was in Agnes. We've been looking at the current state of supplies for the Liberators and, well... In our personal slash professional opinion, it's starting to look pretty dire. That's so. Hmm. Honestly, they're not wrong. Kevis and Agnes get their supplies straight from the castle. Obviously, we don't have that kind of backing. I knew it. I could tell from the wares in that office that you might be struggling. Which is why we were thinking we'd like to make a proposal. You got some plan to get us topped up again? There's a supply cache hidden near the colony I was once stationed at. It's in a cave near Pioneer's Point. There are supplies captured from Agnes in there, too. 
Should be a sizable amount. <coughs> oh man, I should be fully recovered from COVID by now, but I don't know where the heck that cough came from. Kev is on the back foot. Well, I've given up on the cash. So if ever there was a time to swoop in and snap it up, it's now. Well, you've sold me on the idea, but are you two okay with this? Given your former affiliations, that is. It's true, I went back and forth on the idea, but then I remembered how the Liberator saved our lives. Now I know just how much of a headache managing resources can be. You're good eggs, both of you. Yes, it's an incredibly kind gesture. You're doing us a great service here. Thank you so much. Oh, not at all. Glad to be of service. You taught us that there's a way to live where fighting isn't the be-all end-all. It's the least we could do. Alright, we'll take you to the cave where the supply cache is hidden. Alright, yeah, abandoned supplies. Let's do it. I'll see what's going on with these abandoned supplies. So that is right close to... Would I be able to fast travel here and get over easy? Maybe? I guess we'll see. I guess we'll have a look-see and find out if that's the case. But yeah, let's uh, let's do some side quest stuff for now. This has got to be the right cave. With uh, with me getting back into work, it means I'm waking up decently early. So part of me is already a little smidge tired just from having woken up so dang early. Um, can I even get over there? Huh? Um. Yeah. So part of me is already a tiny smidge tired. Oh, I can probably get in that way. Hopefully later upper landing. So if I trek around or something like that. Um, but tomorrow is going to be like a day of... I never got your guys' things. Wow. My goodness. I guess I'll grab your thing really quickly. Anyway, tomorrow's a day for doing stuff with picking up truck parts. Stuff is the case instead. So... So, I can afford to be up a little bit longer today, is the case. Otherwise, this is probably around the point that I'd call the stream to be able to get a full, full sleep before work tomorrow. Because yeah, while I'm uh, while I'm working, I don't exactly have as much time for streaming to streaming. But tomorrow is a little bit of a different kind of day. So, so today I can, is the case. That's epic. What that I can stream for longer today? Ooh. Oh, I want to see what's over here. Good luck tomorrow picking up the parts. I appreciate it. I need to pick up a new belt for the uh, fan at the front. So you can't even start it right now, considering, you know, the belt that turns everything in the front, you know, isn't in there right now. Because the old one was all ratty and gross, and uh, if it's ever been replaced, it wouldn't have been in a long, long time, if at all. Um, and I really didn't want it to be on the road and potentially snap in the middle of a drive and, you know, kind of wreck the vehicle. So it seemed like a good idea to... Uh, oh, neat to get it done now rather than on the road you know what the heck can i not get in there um anyway so we got one of about the same size and it seemed like it was too small we couldn't attach it on there and it had grooves on it which the old one didn't but it's possible that they just wore out with time or something like that um but couldn't get it on there so we exchanged it for one just the immediate size up and that one's too loose like that one gets on there easy peasy, but it's too loose. So now it's like, what the heck? Do we need like some in-between? So we're going to have to like browse around and see if we can find some weird in-between belt. Or maybe that one that we thought was too small could get on there if we just forced it some more or something like that. I don't know. But it's a little bit of a uh, strange situation with that. So I need to try and find a belt of the right size. Nice view of Cadencia's great sword from here too, huh? Hmm. The way I hear it. It's hotly contested territory for Kevis and Agnes. Um, I've heard so too. There was some large-scale battle there earlier. Sure. So it's like a key position that the two castles glare at each other over. Both Kevis and Agnes must want what's there for some strategic reason, I guess. In every age, that sword is the fulcrum of conflict. Yeah, in a way there, huh? I have no idea how to get to this cave. <laughs> I'm very much at a loss. This music's so good! I'm so confused here, though. Oh, it's got to be that, right? It has to be. I'm going to try trekking from there. Anyway. But yeah, so trying to sort that out and stuff. 
the uh, last few things to sort it out to get it like on the road legal to drive and all that is get that belt and install it and then uh fix the brake lights which we're probably going to need to get an electrician to come in and do that um the guy that inspected and appraised my truck gave me a contact for someone he knows that's an electrician that's willing to work on it so we'll probably get into contact with him and then uh the insurance and registration and then the glass the windows oh and i guess the uh park lights and stuff we need to sort out so those four things none of which are like super duper crazy in terms of like workload for sorting them out and uh should be legal to drive on the road see the cutscene where Niall asked the kids what song they like it was really funny if I have I don't know if I remember it exactly but uh oh 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 they're kind of high level and stuff but yeah I just wanted to mention before you forgot so the truck is almost fully finished no like if we're talking about like fully finished, there are need to be like body work, work out all the dents, repaint it, get things like the wiper motor working, um, probably replace the carpet in the bottom, replace like the interior stuff that's all ratty and falling apart, um, get a new key for the locks and stuff because <laughs> many years ago, my dad lost the key for the truck and it wasn't possible to get a new key cut because we didn't have, you know, the original key because it was lost. So he needed to build an entire, well, he needed to order an entirely new ignition to be built <laughs> that's in there. But it means that the ignition, which we can put a key into, and the lock on the doors are different keys. And we don't actually have the key for the, well, maybe we do if we can find it around somewhere. We don't actually have the key to unlock the side of it. So currently I can't even lock it. Um, so I'll just not keep anything valuable in there for a little while. I'm not going to interact with that right now, I don't think. Um, so, yeah, there's uh, there's that. So there's a lot to uh, go in terms of, like, fully finishing it. Yeah, it's almost street legal. It is almost street legal, at least. Um, and then all the other steps can just, you know, take it a relaxed place. Get them done whenever I feel like getting them done. You know, oh, the, one of the big things is the box needs to be replaced. The wood at the bottom. It's all like rotted through and there's holes in it everywhere. And I wouldn't want to put too much weight back there because there's a chance that a plank might just break because um, it's wood at the bottom of that box. Um, is it behind the camp? Is that what I have to get to? What the heck is going on here? Um, so yeah, um almost on the road and like ready to be driven and enjoyed and stuff. I've been practicing a manual with my neighbor since, you know, they have a manual car, uh, old Subaru. So I've been learning that and I'm starting to feel a bit more confident with a manual now, you know, still not as confident as with a standard, but I'm starting to feel semi-confident here, you know, as the case just the other day was taking it on some, you know, actual roads rather than just parking in a, oh gosh, dang it, rather than a big parking lot. I have no idea how I get in there. Like, what? Abandoned supplies. I'll have a look-see along here. But yeah, so that's almost done. Um, one of the big steps that we needed to get done was getting it inspected and appraised. Um, and that's happened since, you know, he was the guy that referred me to the electrician there. Um, so there's been, like, a proper inspection. I have, like, the full inspection appraisal report, like, in hard copy and in PDF and stuff. So I now know what the truck is worth because of that. Um, and apparently its current value, according to the inspection, is roughly about 11 and a half K. About 11 and a half grand there, which is uh, honestly more than we thought that it would be. But I guess like putting in work like up to this point has definitely helped increase its value a decent bit, which is nice. One of the really interesting things that was in the oops inspection report was its original market value. Apparently my truck like brand new 1953 would have been worth about $1,344. Bit of a different times, huh? And so out of curiosity, I ran it through like an inflation calculator and apparently 1344 in 1953 is about 15 grand today. So my truck isn't yet worth as much as it was brand new, but it's getting close, you know? You know, put in a, uh, you know, another half a year of work or something like that. And I have no doubt that, you know, we'll surpass the point where it'll be worth more than it was brand new. Just, you know, because it's an antique and stuff. 
Stop, stop me silly. You really struck gold with this one. It's like a real treasure hoard. Where there's smoke, there's fire. And where there's treasure. Oh no, I'm sorry. I had no idea it was home to monsters. We gotta stay back. We'll do a little pest control. Alright, I guess we're fighting things. Yeah, it's not a spoiler cutscene, but it's hella funny. Um, can I auto battle this? Oh, well. Oh my goodness gracious. Uh, let's see here. But yeah, I guess you could say it, but if you do end up seeing it, know what it is, I'll probably end up seeing it. As a kid's what song they want to hear or play on the piano so it must be some, oh it was one of the main story cutscenes then because i rem i do remember seeing that was the case so it's something that can't be missed i just wasn't sure exactly what was being referred to before yeah i uh i remember hearing that and i thought that was really cool a very nice touch there all right i'm gonna cheese this is what i'm gonna do watch you get cheesed run away run away now i'll come back in a hot second yeah, that was definitely really good there. What am I? Can I not move? Uh oh. Who stole cheese? See you later. <laughs> Get outplayed. Outgamered. What can I say? Hopefully the one guy doesn't respawn. It still says one of four. So that's pretty good right there. Anyway, so yeah, hopefully the getting it on the road part should be pretty soon here. I mean, we keep on thinking that it's going to be pretty soon and then more stuff crops up like the brake lights. I, uh, the park lights are in a little bit of a weird situation. So there's the headlights at the top that work just fine. And then underneath that, the park lights, which are smaller lenses that are yay big. This is one of the park light lenses here. And trouble is, the, um, it keeps shattering along the bottom, the glass, because plastics weren't really all that prevalent 70 years ago. So if you need a lens for one of your headlights, it was just straight up glass, you know, was the case. And it also means that it's really darn fragile. So uh, being up against the hard metal and then having like a metal disc rim thing, which I have right here, you know, having one of these around it and then being like pressed onto metal, it, um, you know, might not. So it looks like that, essentially, the park lights, you know, it's uh, makes them a little bit prone to, uh, you know, breaking and stuff like that. So one of them was shattered along the bottom. And so we decided to replace it. So we bought a brand new one from a seller all the way in Ontario. So the complete other side of the country, because, you know, <laughs> these aren't really manufactured anymore. And it was 50 bucks for a lens, $50 for one of these. Like, my goodness gracious. So, you know, that kind of sucked, but we reinstalled that. And then it was like, all right, the lenses at the bottom are fine. But more recently, when we were testing out the lights in them it, themselves, the one that we hadn't touched the lens of wasn't working. So we tried to, you know, get it out of there. And we found that that lens was shattered along the bottom too. And it's like, well, that sucks. Um, and we tried to get the bulb out, but, you know, didn't have the right tools for it at the time because there was like an extra layer of metal there that wasn't on the other side. So we we're like, all right, let's just take out the one that we replaced the lens for and have a look at the bulb there. And then maybe we can get an idea of what it is and, you know, go replace it. And the brand new one shattered along the bottom as well. And the brief time it was in there, it's like, what? Come on. <laughs> so what we ended up doing was uh, the bigger shattered pieces, um, like the more solid chunks, we tried to kind of reattach with JB Weld. So you can kind of see along the bottom of this where it's reattached and stuff. I think the reattachment came out not half bad, but there's still like a chunk there missing and stuff, which means that, you know, some moisture could get in and, uh, you know, potentially not be so great for the actual light bulb itself and stuff that's in there. Um, this one came out the best. This is like the brand new one that, you know, shattered and then we tried to reattach there and stuff. This is the only one I have here. Um, the other ones are in a little bit worse of state and, uh, you know, have bigger chunks missing because the other shards are either too small to reattach or just like glass dust and stuff like that. So yesterday I decided to reach out to my glass blower friendo, my uh, my friend that does that runs her own glass blowing business to basically ask her, hey, do you think it's feasible to like just blow a little dabble of glass into like the little smidges that are missing in my lenses so I don't have to shell out like another 50 bucks per lens <laughs> to get some of these probably very finite thing where Bob's in the world nowadays sent in from the other side of the country. Um, and I haven't heard back yet, but we'll, we'll see there. But 
yeah one of my uh friendos from the german bilingual program um that i haven't actually talked to in a long long time uh runs her own glass blowing business so i decided to send her a message and be like hey I don't know how glass blowing works. Do you think you can fix this? Because if so, that'd be amazing. You know, <laughs> so we'll see if my glass blower friendo can uh, can patch that up and uh, save some hassle. So, you know, there's a uh, there's that. We'll see what uh, we'll see what comes of that. <laughs> Is the case because if so, that'd be great. Uh, if we can't fix it, then we'll probably just reinstall the. Uh, partially repaired but still broken lenses and just have the broken parts still on the bottom so if any moisture gets in it drains out but you know preferably it would be a solid piece you know that would be the ideal situation but you know we'll see what comes of it just mind of you an old field trip you had in middle school of you going to a glass accessory factory thing here in the city that sounds kind of cool am i asleep do i need a mash hold on I'm cheesing this. I'm cheesing this. So over a decade ago during one day trip. How the heck do you suddenly remember that? I have no clue. Because it had to do with glass professionals and stuff. So, yeah. I'm going to see if my glass blower friend can help me with, you know, just patching up the little lenses and stuff. And as for the actual windshield and back window that need to be replaced, um, we got to take it to a crystal glass place that's in a small community just outside the city. None of the crystal glass places within the city are willing to do it even though they should be able to just the same cut out the glass to the right shape and you know install it in but uh but nobody wants to actually work on a vehicle that old out of fear of like screwing it up and not knowing what to do i guess um but the uh but the one in a small community outside of the city is willing to work on it but uh so that's cool at least so we're gonna try and finish everything else off like insurance registration and those other little things and then probably just drive it there to get the glass replaced you know since we'd be allowed to do that at that point so that's the plan so we're gonna wrap up the belt the brake lights the park lights um get insurance and registration and then uh then we're gonna drive it to get the big panes of glass replaced and um, then it should be ready to just be enjoyed on the road and you know be all good and stuff here i'll even start anew just to play it safe because i don't want to redo the whole thing to you know minimize risk here and stuff so yeah that's what's uh that's what's going on with that but is uh is neat stuff so there we go one last one to go and now that i'm starting to get a little bit more confident with a manual i'm definitely you know looking forward to practicing on my own vehicle and stuff i hope so Fingers crossed it's sometime early next month, but we'll see. We'll see how things end up working out. But that's what I'm hoping for right now. Hoped for it to be sometime this month, but, you know, more things cropped up like that belt situation. So, uh, you know, we shall, uh, we shall see. We've been replacing some more things than we initially planned for getting it on the road. It looks so silly. Like all the uh, hoses inside that, you know, are for transporting fluids like antifreeze. Um, we've been replacing all those since they were cracked and old and probably never been replaced ever So we've been putting new ones of those in there and you know getting it ready to be comfortable on the road and stuff and minimize risk So should be pretty nice by the time it's ready is the hope at least we'll, we'll see And then again still a long way to go before it's like really prayed up But it'll be a vehicle just fine pretty darn soon all right how in the hell do we carry all this stuff back? With our current numbers, I'd say we can't. Can't you just use video game inventories? Hold on, I'll have a Levinus dispatch for transport. Oh, I'll do the same. But they- oh, never mind, there is two. I was about to say, but there's only one. Let's take care of the logistics for you. We'll get the supplies back. I'll catch you at Colleen 9 in a bit. Alright then, it's all yours. I do have to say though, driving a manual is a bit more fun than driving a uh, automatic. It's a little bit more like playing a video game where you have like the push and pull risk and reward as you're uh, as you're changing gears, especially while doing turns and stuff like that. So you know that's kind of fun. It'll be interesting on that uh, truck though. <laughs> I'm not really gonna want to try to uh, you know take too much risk or anything like that while turning there. You know it's not like it has power steering. I don't have as much leeway <laughs> or anything like that. So. Uh, there's that. Oh, one cool other thing that I can mention about the truck, though, is 
you know, it is a brand that most people have probably never even heard of being Fargo, the thing where Bob that, uh, you know, Chrysler was doing both Dodge and Fargo and Fargo was like the international Dodge. And, you know, they were producing some Fargos in the States, but they were shipping them overseas. And Canada was the one place that was making their own Fargos, yada, yada. Point is, it's not exactly a super duper common brand, especially considering it was like discontinued in the 70s or something, I think. So I had never in my life seen another Fargo before, like only my own. Until a week and a half ago, I saw another Fargo. It was my cousin's. He bought it like just like half a week prior. Um, so now I own a Fargo and my cousin does too. He owns one that's quite a bit newer than mine. He owns a 1967 one, I believe it was. Um, and it was really funny. He apparently already has the same truck as a Dodge because, you know, Chrysler is making both Dodge and Fargo, but they were essentially the same truck, but with a different name. He already has a 1967 Dodge and he bought a 1967 Fargo from a friend of his because he because his friend was selling it for what he thought was a good price. And he was like, I'm too tempted. I'm buying it. So he's literally basically like a, you know, trading card collector or something out here, but with vehicles, because he has both two varieties of the exact same vehicle, just the different name on it. And I find that really funny, <laughs> really crazy that he bought that, despite the fact that he basically already had the same truck, but yeah, he couldn't help himself. So I uh, got to see another Fargo <laughs> a couple weeks ago, the week and a half, whatever the heck time flies, um, got to ride in it and stuff. And it was uh, it was super chill. Uh, Colony 9 Supply Office has been improved, expanding the selection of goods available for purchase. Cool, I'm never going to use it. You know. So, yeah, there's that. Thanks, all. Looks like we've got a good surplus of goods for the immediate future. We should be the ones thanking you. You've really helped us pull through here. Seeing as we've now been assigned to logistics and procurement, we'll be sure to show you a marked improvement there. I suppose we're more suited to these sorts of duties than actual combat. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone's got something they're good at. Couldn't agree more. Good luck in your continued efforts. All right, cool. Another quest complete is the case. Let's see here. You covered an ample stockpile of supplies, replenishing the supply offices lineup. Perhaps you can take a quick peek at yourself later. I'm not getting any expansion kits. Sucks to suck. As for you, almost done with making chapter two of the game. Do you want to make chapter seven and probably spend another half of your building and have that be the end of the demo? Or do you want chapter two to be the end of the demo? Decisions, decisions. Well, I figure it out, but I need to move this monitor a little bit aside to see chat slightly better or just like move my chair or something. But I'll figure it out, but because you have RPG Maker MZ, do you think sometime you could check out the dev build of what you have and send you the download and all? See so if maybe you could find out why it won't deploy the game? I could try, but you know, I'm already... <laughs> schedule stuff is really crazy, but if I have the time, I can have a look-see. Couldn't find any, but figure maybe you could honestly don't know what to do. It sounds like a lot of fun there. It definitely was. And uh, that one was a new restoration, which means that it's just the frame that's old and it's newer stuff put inside. So it was like a full automatic and stuff like that. Whereas I'm keeping mine original. So a slightly different way of handling fixing it up, but still rather interesting. 